there is an underlying bug hypothesis. This is a term from Boris Beiser, back to software test techniques at least. Uh, the bug hypothesis is what kind of bug are you looking for with this technique, you know, which is, of course, also um, a, a good way of deciding should I use the technique, yes or no, because if the um, if the bug hypothesis is not of interest to you, you don't care, um, then you don't really have any interest in using the technique. So it's always good to ask yourself, well, what kind of bug is this technique good at going after, and, and is that what I'm trying to do here? Is that related to the objective of, of uh, the testing that's underway right now? So for decision tables, the bug hypothesis is that there will be, under some set of conditions, an improper action taken, uh, either the, the completely wrong action, the one which was supposed to not be taken, is, is, uh, is taken, or, or that the right action is taken, but it's carried out in the wrong way. It's carried out improperly. Uh, or, you know, alternatively, the possibility is that there's an action that is supposed to be taken and it is not taken at all. Some uh, important bit of processing that the application was supposed to do doesn't happen. So those are the kinds of things that we're looking for, and as you can see, those are related to the business logic, uh, the uh, t doing the right thing based on the particular situation the program finds itself in. Okay, so let's look at a decision table in particular. Now, what we're going to use here throughout this webinar is an example. The example is for uh, e-commerce uh, site and the uh, processing of orders. Now, in this particular case, this is the handling of a credit card, um, processing of the credit card by the back-end payment processing system. So we have four conditions, real account, active account, within limits, location OK. Those are shown on the upper left side of the decision table. And we have three actions, approve, call card holder, and call vendor. Those are shown on the lower left side of the table. Now in this case, all of the conditions and all of the actions are uh, Boolean. In other words, they, they're either true or they're false, or yes or no, shown here. And um, what we have in the top half of the decision table are the combinations of conditions. And in the bottom half, we have the implementation of the business logic that says, OK, under this particular combination of conditions, do this and don't do that, hence the yeses and nos there. Now, um, this is a uh, interesting type of decision table, interesting form of decision table, called a full decision table. The reason it's called a full decision table is because every possible combination of conditions is shown there. Now, how do you know that that is true? Well, the two, two ways. There are four conditions. So how many possible combinations of yes, no are there if there are four variables that can be yes or no? Well, it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 2 to the fourth power, which is 16. And you'll notice that there are 16 columns here. So that's one thing that would have to be true to be a full decision table. It would have to have exactly the right number of columns based on the conditions. Now, in this case, they're Boolean conditions, so it's to the n power, where n is the number of conditions. The other thing that you need to see is the pattern that is shown here. There's a pattern that allows you to visually inspect the top half of the table and know that, indeed, all of the combinations are there. So you'll notice that the first uh, half of the real account uh, row is all yes, and then the last half is all no. and then. Uh, we split that in half with the active account row, and that's four yeses, four noes, four yeses, four noes. And then we split it in half again with the within limits, two yes, two no, and split that in half again. And now we're down to the lowest level of splitting that could occur, 
where the alternation is every column is the opposite value. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Now, that, that pattern um, has to exist uh, for it to be a full decision table as well. Um, so then that makes it real easy to construct a decision table because if you know the conditions that apply, um, you put them in, in order. And it can be any order you want in terms of you know which one comes first on the list of conditions, like real account in this case, and which one comes last, like location OK. And then you build this pattern of yeses and nos where at the top row you have the first half of the columns are yes and the second half of the columns are no. And then you split that in, in half. In other words, the, the, the rate of change is, is twice as fast for the column or the row below that and then the same for the row below that and so on. And such that the last row has alternation on every other column. So it's got this nice uh, visually inspectable pattern that you can look at, satisfy yourself, indeed all of the combinations are here. Now, there, you'll notice, of course, in the bottom half of the actions uh, section, there is no such pattern, and, and that's because this is um, arbitrary. Now, I use the word arbitrary guardedly here because it's not arbitrary in the sense that um, it has no meaning. It's arbitrary in the sense that it, unlike the top half of the table with the condition combinations, the, there is no mathematical pattern to this. This is not determined by mathematics or Boolean logic. This is determined by the business logic. And business logic is uh, subject to, in, in most cases, the uh, whims, um, decisions, uh, preferences of human beings, and uh, thus not uh, subject to mathematical regularity. Now, there might be special cases where you're dealing with some kind of physics problem or chemistry problem or something like that. You see patterns emerge in the actions. That's certainly possible. Um, but that is a uh, manifestation of the property of the problem that you're trying to solve, not an inherent uh, property of the decision table. So. Just to make, try to summarize that, in a full decision table, there will be a pattern of uh, values in the top half where the condition combinations are shown. There will not necessarily be a pattern in the bottom half where the actions uh, and their combinations are shown. Now, one other thing to mention before I move on. In this case, the conditions are Boolean, and therefore, um, each has two values, so the number of columns is 2 to the n power, where n is equal to the number of conditions. Not all conditions are Boolean. Conditions can be defined on ranges of values. Conditions can be defined on values that have, uh, on variables that have, could take on three values or four values or something. And then in that case, uh, that obviously would change the number of columns and it would change the pattern. Uh, but it would be an extension of the same kind of thing. So if um, there were three possible values for active account, for example, um, yes, no, and maybe, <laughs> assuming it was somewhat indeterminate, then the number of columns would be 2 to the third power, or 8, times 3, 3 for the active account, which would be 24. And similarly, you would expect that the, uh, the pattern would look different and that we would have to have four yeses, four noes, and four maybes, and then four yeses, four noes, and four maybes for active accounts. So that's fine. That can, that can happen. Um, you just have to be aware of how it affects this. <clears throat>